guys welcome back uh, today we will be discussing some uh, uncommon questions which are some different questions uh, in the electrotechnic subjects uh, which are probably based on fundamental physics uh, from your advanced level uh, i have a set of questions around uh, 10 questions to be discussed uh, i'll leave a link for the questions in the description and the meanwhile you will be having time codes so that you can easily jump between the questions uh and see the questions whatever you want right uh let's begin okay today uh i thought of uh, doing a bit different thing let me take the question quickly yeah right so here the question is so this is the first question right an electron is projected in a word in a initial horizontal speed of uh 1.6 meters per second into an electric field between uh parallel plates as shown in the figure assume that the field between the plates is uniform and directly directed vertically downward and that the outside the plate is zero right the field be outside the plate is zero the electron enters the field at a point midway between the plate the charge of an electron is given and the effect of gravity can be neglected if the electron just misses the upper plate so it when it's leaving it just misses the upper plate and they are asking us to find the magnitude of the electric field right okay let's uh, see how to uh, tackle this question right okay so the first question right so if i draw the figure or a figure right so this is our plate right so this plate is 2 cm long right and 1 m 1 cm right wait and we have an electric field downward electric field of intensity e and a positive charge right oh, sorry an electron a negative charge so a negative charge enters the field right so this is negative charge this is minus q this enters the field in this direction exactly at the center so the path they have said it just misses the upper plate so it slowly curves up and when it's ex exiting it just misses the upper plate and exits in this direction so here is the exit right so when it comes to electric field so if there is a positive particle let's say there is an electric field in this direction and we have a positive particle here and a negative particle right there are two particles so in positive particle the force would be in the same direction of the field right force f and here the force would be in the opposite direction right and this force is equal to eq right so there is another definition for electric field that is the force acting on right electric field intensity right electric field intensity right this is also defined e also defined as uh, the force acting on a, a unit positive charge force acting on a unit positive charge in an electric field right in an electrostatic field right electrostatic field right so we know that e is equal to f over q so from this f is equal to e q. already we saw that it from gauss theorem right this was in our previous videos from the gauss theorem we saw that uh, e is equal to phi times a that is phi is the electric flux so e is also said the flux from an unit area right so we know what is uh, uh, the direction of the force right obviously there would be a weight in the downward direction right and so if we take the particle and if we mark the forces so they have said to neglect the gravity so this is approximately right this is approximately zero in this case so we are not considering mg right so when you apply f equal ma in the upward direction newton second law right we get f equal mass into acceleration we don't know the acceleration that is equal to eq right so acceleration a is equal to eq by m 
right? And this is the linear motion, right? From let's say this is point A and this is point B, right? From A to B, right? From A to B, if we apply uh, um, S equal ut plus half a t squared, S equal ut plus half a t squared, the distance traveled is two centimeter by 100, that is equal to the initial velocity. Uh, they have said as uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power minus, so 10 to the power six times the t, right, plus zero, because horizontally there is no any acceleration. So from this calculation, we can find t. So t is equal to two times 10 to the power minus eight by 1.6 seconds, right? Then again from A to B, right, in the upward direction here horizontally here, in the upward direction s equal ut plus half a t square right again here the traveling distance is half centimeter right so you have to be careful there it is half centimeter so 0.5 by 100 is equal to initial velocity zero plus half into a a is eq by m into t squared so if you see this equation, right, we already know Q, right? Q is the charge. So Q is given to us as uh, 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs, right? And uh, M mass, right? So in this case, the mass should be uh, known to you all. You have to uh, keep the value of mass in mind. So it is 9 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram this school of, right we know the mass and we know the time right time is uh, 2 times 10 to the power minus 8 by 1.6 so all the parameters are known except e so from this equation we can calculate the electric field intensity e which is in the downward direction right so if we calculate the answer should be Let me do the quick calculation, right? So 0.5 by 100 into 2 into 9 into 10 to the power inverse 31 should be should be divided by 1.602 into 10 to the power 19 right, and divided by 2 by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 8 square. So this is approximately 360, right? This is approximately 360 Newtons per Coulomb, right? So very simple uh, question. Right. So you have to remember only just one equation that is F equal EQ, right? Other than that, this is a linear motion question, right? So we have fairly simple thing, right? Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question, right? Let me see. Right. Okay, the next question is based on capacitors. Uh, they have said there are two capacitors of nine microfarads and four microfarads are initially connected in series with each other and with a source of 26 volt, right? So they have given us a source 26 volt and both are connected in series. Uh, then the char charged capacitors are disconnected from the source. So charged capacitors are disconnected from the source and from each other, then reconnected each other with plates of the same sign together by how much does the energy of the system change? Right? Fairly simple question. Let we'll do that. Right. So here, if we draw the circuit quickly, they have said we have two capacitors. One is nine microfarad, and the other one is four microfarads. Right. So these both are connected to a source. Right of 26 volt. So initially, the both the capacitors would get charged, right? 
so we have to find what is the charge in in the uh, total system right so what would be the c equivalent right that is the 9 plus 4 right so that is 13 microfarad so what would be the total charge from the both the system so q of the system right that can be calculated from cv since c is 13 into 10 to the power minus 6 right sorry uh, here i made a mistake uh, so it's not actually 13 So 13 c is 1 over 9 plus 1 over 4 inverse 1 right so here that is 36 by 13 right microfarads so here this is 36 by 13 uh, v is 26 so the total is 72 micro coulombs don't forget this is microfarads so here volt so the answer is in micro coulombs so this is q system and right? the total system charge now after removing from the battery source both are connected in such a way with same polarities so here nine here four right so when the capacitors are connected in uh, same uh, series connection that is in series every capacitor get equal charge so here is a q system and here is another q system so what is the total charge so total charge is now two times 72 right so both are disconnected from the uh, battery source and both are connected together since there is no any other means for the charge to escape from here right so in the case if they are connected with positive and negative uh, plates together then positive and negative might get neutralized and become zero but here both are connected uh, in the same polarity so they can't escape right so here there will be a common voltage present because both are parallel so definitely there would be a common voltage until the common voltage is developed charge would Go, move from one capacitor to another capacitor and they will bring it to a common voltage so if the common voltage is v so v is common voltage right so v is common voltage so if uh, so here the charge would in the entire system would be nine times v plus four times v right so the voltage would be 143 44 by 3 volt 13 volt so this is the common voltage now if we find the equivalent of this system now c equivalent that is 9 plus 4 13 microfarads so total charge in this system would be energy in this system would be equal you can use half cv squared right so that would be half times c is 13 in microfarads remember that right into voltage 144 by 3 13 sorry squared so you can find the energy here you will get a particular value similarly here if we find the energy right here the energy is equal again half cv squared right so half times c here it's 13 36 by 13 into v squared means 26 squared i'm finding it for the total system so you will get a value here Right. so this is approximately 936 microjoule so remember here the farads are written in the capacitance is written in microfarad so that micro unit will be continuing down so here the value is around 797.54 microjoule right. so what is the energy loss the delta e energy loss would be 7936 minus 797.54 so the difference is 138.5 sorry uh, 138.46 someone microjoule so this is the difference so this would have dissipated due to the heat and maybe sparking right so those things are the reason for this dissipation 
right so so if i go one step further if you connect with other polarities i mean the opposite polarities so one is plus and the other one is minus if you connect in this sense right both are having 72 uh, micro coulombs 72 micro coulombs initially so first of all what happens is uh, the positive and negative cancels out and the remaining will flow between the uh, capacitors to form a common voltage so here in this case since both are same uh, the remaining would be zero so just i'll for the quick uh, explanation i'll change one value to let's say 172 so if one is 172 and another one is 72 the remaining charge would be only my 100 micro coulombs right only 100 and this would uh, differ between let's say this is c1 and c2 that would go between the C1V, so that is equal to the charge in the first capacitor and this is charge in the second capacitor. So if you know C1 and C2, definitely in this case, you know C1 and C2, you can find the V and the further steps are same in calculation, right? So simply as that, so fairly simple question, right? Okay, uh, let's move to the next one. So in the next question, so third one, right? Uh, two identical uh, light bulbs are connected in parallel to a source with EMF of eight volt. So both two identical bulbs in parallel, right? Uh, and the internal resistance, right? Uh, EMF has an internal resistance of 0.8 ohms, right? Each light bulb has a resistance of two ohms assumed independent of the current through the bulb, right? So uh, there's a meaning in this because we know resistance change with temperature. So when, when bulb works, definitely there would be a change in the temp resistance, right? Due to the temperature. But here there is nothing like that, right? Uh, find the current through each bulb, the potential difference across each bulb and the power delivered to each bulb. So current, potential difference and power of each bulb. And the second part, suppose one uh, of the bulb burns out so that the filament breaks and current no longer flows through it, find the power delivered to the remaining bulb. Does the remaining bulb glow more or less brightly after the other bulb burns out than before? Right. Let's see how to handle this one. Right. Okay, let me clear this. So here, initial case, so they have said there are two identical bulbs, right? Each two ohms connected to a eight volt battery source of 0 0.8, right? So this is the case. So obviously since both are same identical bulbs, both will get same amount of current i and i and here there will be 2i of current leaving the battery right so once after some time one bulb burns out so only one bulb is working now right so this is again 8 ohms 8 volt 0 0.8 ohms here this is again 2 ohms here the current is now different let's say i1 right so they are asking us the current right voltage of the bulb and uh, power of the bulb, right? So simply you can use Kirchhoff's law to one loop, the below I'll use for this loop in this direction. So the EMF is eight, right? And two times I plus two I times 0.8, right? For the internal resistor of the battery, right? So using this, we know eight equal 3.6 I, right? So I is equal to, I'll write in fraction form, it's 20 by nine, right amperes so you know i right so you need to find a voltage for the bulb right so voltage for the bulb from v equal i r right i is 20 by 9 and r is 2 so that is 40 by 9 volt right so both are done and the power obviously we know power equal to right power is equal to v i right so v you know it is uh, 40 by 9 and this is 20 by 9 so final answer is 800 by 9 
watts. So this is the power for each bulb, right? So 800 by 81, right, for each bulb. So in the second case, again, you can use Kirchhoff's law. So you can write 8 equal I1 times 2 plus 0.8. So here, I1 would be equal to 20 by 7 amperes. V equal IR for the bulb. So here, again, I'll take it as V1. So V1 is equal to 20 by 7 into 2. So V1 is 40 by 7, right, volt. So P1 power, again, VI. So V is 40 by 7 into 20 by 7, right? So the answer would be 800 by 49. That's right. So now the last question was, which one would glow uh, brighter? Obviously, which has the more power will grow brighter. So this one, the second bulb would be the brightest one. So this will be more brighter due to high power. Right. So fairly simple question, right? You have to just draw the circuit properly. And uh, here, the internal resistance is the major part. So uh, do consider that, don't forget about that. And the current flow, right? Both are equal, you have to just get through that points, right? So fairly easy question. So let's move to the next part, right? So the fourth question, right? The fourth question state that there are three identical resistors are connected in series. When a certain potential difference is applied uh, across the combination, the total power dissipation is 27 watts. Uh, what power would be dissipated if the three resistors are connected in parallel across the same potential difference, right? So you'll see. So, so let me. So there are three resistors, right? Identical resistors, one, two, and three, connected to some sort of potential difference. Let's say this is V, this R, R, R. So here the power is 27 watts. And they're asking if they are connected in parallel to the same battery source, I mean the same source, what would be the power? Again, R, 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 right? So simply, you calculate the R equivalent. So R equivalent is 3R, right? S simple as that, right? So R equivalent is 3R. And uh, using P equal V squared by R, you can write 27 is equal to V squared by 3R, right? So V squared is equal to 81, R, right, first equation. So here, in the second case, R equivalent is equal to R by three, right? So again, use P equal to V squared by R, right? So you don't know what is the P here, power here. In terms of V squared from equation one, you can write 81, so here R by three, sorry, right? 81 uh, R by R by three, so R, R and R cancels out. So the power to the system is 243 watts, right? So very simple question, right? Just they are trying to trick you out, right? You can easily handle these things, right? Okay, the final question from this. Okay, the final part, right? There are two long parallel wires, right? Hung by a four centimeter cords of com from a common axis. These wires have a mass per unit length of 12.5 gram per meter and carry the same current in opposite directions. What is the current in each wire if the cords hung at an angle of six degree with the vertical? So this is a magnetic field question, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's see. So we'll draw the diagram quickly. So if you see, uh, there are two long parallel wires, right? Hung by a four centimeter long cord, right? From a common axis. Let's take, so this is the common axis point. So this is the axis. So there are two long cords in this manner, right? Each are four centimeter long. Right, so this is your, these are the rods, right? They are very long rods, right? Uh, has a mass per unit length, right? So that is M by L, mass per unit length of 12.5 grams per meter, right? Carrying the same current, they are carrying same current I and i in opposite directions right opposite direction means if one is in dot other one is in cross right so dot means outside the paper cross means into the paper right what is the e, uh, what is the current in each wire if the cord hangs at an angle of uh, six degree uh, with the vertical so the angle here is six degree right six degrees here also angle is six degrees right so when there is a magnetic flow uh, using your right hand uh, rule right right hand screw rule right you can find the direction of the magnetic field so due to this i'll just name it as a and b uh, due to a there will be a magnetic field at b right due to a there will be a magnetic field at uh, b in the upward direction right due to b there will be a magnetic direction at uh, magnetic uh, density here that is also be in the upper direction right so after finding this right you can use your Fleming's uh, left hand rule right Fleming's left hand rule for both A and B so in the case of A if you use the Fleming's left hand rule the force is in this direction outward so obviously there is mass mg and here there is mass mg right here there is tension T here there is tension T, system is symmetric, so everything would be equal, right here. Here the force would be, again, outward, right? Due to the uh, simple uh, equilibrium condition, right? So now you have to find the current, right? So this force F, right? This force F can be written as PIL, right? So you can uh, neglect the sine theta part because all three forces are perpendicular to each other, right? So since theta is 90, F is B I L. So you don't know B, right? So B can be written as, uh, mu I by, right? Uh, there's another equation for long rods, right? That's mu, I means the current flowing in one rod, in that particular rod, or two R, right? That is the distance, right? Between these uh, rods, right? So here, this is the center of the rod. So R in this case, we are the point where you are considering. So this would be your R. Right, so now F can be written as F equal uh, mu I squared L by two R, right? So using your equilibrium, if you solve for upper direction, you can write T cos six degree equal mg. And in the horizontal direction, if you write, you can write T sine six degree is equal to F. So if you divide one by another, uh, let's say this is equation one, this is equation two. So two by one will give you tan six equal to F by mg, right? So F is equal to, from this, you can write mg tan six is equal to mu times I squared into L over 2R, right? So 
m by l times g times tan 6 times 2r over mu is equal to i squared right so except i all of the details are known to us right if you see m by l is 12.5 grams per meter so here it is 12.5 into 10 to the power inverse 3 to convert to kilogram into 9.81 into tan 6 degree right into 2 times what is r r is l cos theta times so, sorry l sin theta times that is 4 centimeter times sin theta times 2 right so here 2 times 0 0.04 sin 6 degrees so this is for r divided by mu mu is a constant so which is permittivity sorry permeability not permittivity it is permeability so here that value is 4 pi into 10 to the power inverse 7 right this is equal to i squared so now you can calculate the value of i squared and finally you can calculate the value of i right so the here the thing is you need to remember this part and this part right so the magnetic field density equation and the f equal bil sin theta equation so if you know those the two things this is simply equilibrium of forces right so fairly simple part right so uh, that's it from that section and uh, further i thought of uh, discussing some selected questions from your 2015-16 paper right uh, which has some unique questions right uh, so by the way i leave the paper in the description and uh, uh, in the meantime you will you can uh, see a time code in the below and you can easily find out the questions also right so uh, uh, let's see so here the first question from that paper is what is the resistor range uh, displaying the color bands violet green black and gold right so we'll come to that also we'll go through the next question and we'll go to that uh, the potential difference across the terminals of a battery is 8.4 volt and there is a current of 1.5 ampere in the battery from the negative to positive terminal so it is flowing from negative to positive terminal right uh, when the current is 3.5 mp in the reverse direction the potential difference is 9.4 volt what is the internal resistance and the emf right so let's do these two parts and come to the part c so in the first part the colors given to us are violet right so it is violet which is eight and green which is six black zero and gold which has a five percentage tolerance so obviously gold would be in the uh, minimum part and remember black won't be the first number always right so you can't use black as the first number right so what can be the maximum resistance you can make maximum r would be where you have the largest power right you should have a largest power so so the third number would be absolutely violet so 10 to the power 8 so remaining is green and black so with green and black you can obviously make right 60 so this is 60 times 10 to the power 8 ohms with a 5 percentage of tolerance fairly simple In the minimum r you have to have the smallest power so obviously 10 to the power 0 that is black would be in the third place so other than that there is 86 or 68 so that is 68 68 obviously ohms with five percentage tolerance so very simple you have to just consider which has the maximum and the minimum thing right and the b part a part and the b part right there are two situations right a battery has an emf of e and internal resistance of r when the current is flowing from negative to positive so that is from right to left direction uh, 1.5 amperes the the voltage v is 8.4 volt and the current is flow if the when the current is flowing the opposite direction the voltage is 
9.4 volt so here e and r so you can write two equations for the first condition one equation first is the like your discharging condition right discharging like you are using your mobile phone when you're using your mobile phone the phone is consuming energy from the battery at that time v can be written as e minus ir right so v is 8.4 so that is e you don't know the value of e right minus i that is 1.5 times r with the second condition this is charging condition where you charge the phone right something like that here again using v equal here that is e plus ir since the current is in other direction so this is 9.4 equal again e plus 3.5 times r so equation number one and equation number two so solving simultaneous equation right simply you can solve the simultaneous equation and you can find both e and r so in this case uh, let's say if we subtract uh, 2 minus 1 so 2 minus 1 implies r is equal to that is 5r equal to uh, 1 so r is 0.2 ohms so substituting in either one equation you can find e is equal to 8.7 volt so very simple right very straightforward question very simple you have to think correctly right so the next part right so if we go to the next part let me quickly share the screen right here uh, an electric tea kettle has a multi-position switch and two heating coils when only coil one is switched on the well insulated kettle brings the full pot to uh, pot of water to boil in one minute when only coil two is switched on it requires two minutes to boil the same water uh, find the time interval required to both amount if the coils are in parallel position and in series position so they are asking for both condition right so you will see so in the circuit there are two coils let's say coil one right so there is a there, there might be a switch something like this and there will be a coil one and there would be a coil two so this coil one you don't know what is the power p1 here you don't know what is the power this is p2 right so whatever the power they are boiling same amount of water right same amount of water in an insulated kettle so the energy required is energy required is same isn't it so there would be same energy required so we know energy is equal to power times time and power can be written as v squared by r since this is a home electric appliance so it will work under same condition so voltage would be same so in the first case right you can write uh, when only the first uh, electric uh, kettle uh, electric coil is working this is one minute it takes one minute and this take two minutes right so i'm using the times in minutes itself so for the first coil you can write e is equal to you don't know the power p1 times uh, one so p1 can be written in v squared by r terms so v squared over r1 right for the second coil you can write again e is equal to 2v squared over r2 right time is 2 so i have directly write that right so in the first condition is right in the first condition is both coils are in parallel that means both r1 and r2 are in parallel so the r equivalent would be r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 so you know how to find these things if you calculate the energy here e equal the power right that's the voltage v squared by r equivalent so what is r equivalent that is r1 r2 over r1 plus r2 times the time t right so in terms of r1 r2 you can substitute from these equations from this one 
and this one right so e is equal to v square t times r1 so what you can write for r1 v squared by e right plus in terms of r2 we can write 2v squared by e divided by r1 times r2 that is v squared e times 2v squared by e right so if you see all the v squared terms will cancel out all the e terms will cancel out right so only thing here remaining is 1 here it is t times 2 over here sorry not 2 here it is 3 isn't it 3 because 1 plus 2 3 here 2 so time is 2 by 3 minutes since I have applied in minutes. So if you want to convert into seconds, this is 40 seconds, right? So fairly simple. So in the second case, both are in series. So R1, R2 in series, so R equivalent, you know that is R1 plus R2, again the same energy, so you can write it as V squared by r1 plus r2 into time t you don't know the time let's say this is tp t parallel right tp so here this is ts since it is series so again e is equal to v squared over in terms of r1 you can write as um, v squared by e in terms of r2 you can write it as 2e squared by e into tp right again if you observe this uh, e terms will cancel out so here this is only one v squared terms will cancel out uh, so this is 1 by 3 tp so tp is equal to 3 minutes right so this takes longer right when you connect it in series obviously the resistance will increase and the time will be time consumed will be much higher okay that is the first question from that paper right so if we move to the next question so it's a catch of slow question um, here they have to ask you to state the laws those are basically theories and uh, in the figure in the circuit find the magnitude and the direction of the current flowing in the wire between point b and c so they're asking us to find the current in this uh, point between point b and c right let's see All right so if we take the circuit so i'll quickly draw the circuit Yeah, this is E. E is this given as 250. Right? Here R. R is 1 kilo ohms. Right? Here this is 2R. So 2 kilo ohms. There is a connection here. And there is a resistance. This is 4 kilo ohms. Right? There is another connection here. Another resistance. This is 3 kilo ohms. And this is 2E. So 2E means here 500 volt. So this is the kind of circuit, right? So when you are uh, using your current, current uh, be wise and uh, try to use as much as, uh, unknown, try to reduce the unknowns. So I'll take here, it's I1 is coming out and it is going here and here. So here it is I2, I3, right? So let's take this one, I2, I3 and I2 uh, to make it easier and here the remaining so here remaining is i1 minus i2 plus i3 so now simply have to use Kirchhoff's law right i'll name the circuit here it is a b uh, they have named somewhat right so this is a this is b and this is c so i'll take this is d this is f right so applying Kirchhoff's law right to this uh, smaller circuit that means d a c d right in this direction so here second law because of second law right so second law so in the exam you have to write this properly applying a of second law to the circuit and the direction you have to write that correctly so that is 2000 
i1 plus 3000 i2 right so there are there are clearly three unknowns so at least you need three equations right again i'll apply kirchhoff's law to a b c a the circuit so you will get zero equal no emf 4000 i3 minus 3000 i2 right so you need one more equation right so let's uh, apply the last equation to a sorry d a b c d right so if you apply there again 500 equals uh, 2000 i1 plus 4000 i3 so i somewhat i i neglected this part right so since there are too many currents involved there so i neglected the, that part and somewhat i managed to find uh, three equations for the three unknowns now this is simply solving part so maths part so after solving that right you can find i1 i2 and i3 right so i1 i2 i3 right so what would be the current flowing here between b and c this i1 this current will come down here this part will be coming down and it will join at point b point b i3 will also include here so obviously i1 minus i2 will be flowing here so you have to find i1 minus i2 that's all so i1 you will get uh, answer for i1 around 13 by 100 amperes for i2 it is around 8 by 100 amperes right and uh, i3 i didn't calculate right you can find out right so i3 you can uh, find out uh, i3 would be 3 by 4 of 3 by 4 so that is 6 by 100 amperes right so from this equation you can easily calculate i3 right and so i1 minus i2 from this equation you can find out that is 5 by 100 amperes that's 50 milli amperes right fairly simple calculation if you have easy ideas so you can calculate it simple with a simple idea so it's an entire equation so done within one or two minutes right mm -hmm. let's see the next one right so the next part so this entire question we have done that so next part is the lenz law so lenz law is from magnetic field so due to an current right if there is a varying uh, magnetic field the current would be induced such that it opposes that variation variation in the field so that is the lenz law right uh, the next part right so that's fair and easy right the two small spheres of each 2 uh, two, two grams are suspended by light strings of 10 cm in length and in a uniform electric field right now it's electric field uh, the spheres have a charge of negative charge uh, one is negative and one is positive determine the magnitude and the direction of the electric field that enables the spheres to be in equilibrium at an angle of 10 degree right so the, we did the similar question right so the in that question we, we did it with uh, uh what uh, magnetic field now it's uh, electric field right we will see this so let me clear the screen yeah so if we see the figure right right so we have an support right this is our axis and we have two particles right so one is negative particle and one is positive particle obviously there will be tension here and if you see the charge charge and all are same so obviously these are sym symmetric so this is 10 cm this is 10 cm this is 10 degree this is also 10 degree so there will be weight identical particles so right each 2 g so mg mg so obviously if this has to be in equilibrium so this is a general idea both f should be in the same direction right so already i said in the previous few questions back that if there is an electric field and there is a positive charge the positive charge will experience the force in the same direction and if there is a negative charge negative charge would experience the force in opposite direction so this is the positive charge for us now 
So this positive charge is experiencing a force to it should experience a force towards the right. So the electric field should be from left to right. So the direction of electric field, right? Direction of E should be in this direction, right? Fairly simple. Now the remaining thing is to find the uh, magnitude, right? So to, from the equilibrium, you can write, if you take the upward equilibrium, you can write T equals 10 equal mg and the horizontal equilibrium T sine 10 equal F. So if you divide, you can get tan 10 degree equal F by mg, right? So F is equal to, from that you can take, right from here you can take, F is equal to mg tan 10 degree, right? You can write F equal EQ, right? Electric field intensity into Q. So that is equal to mg tan 10 degrees. So E is equal to, what is M? Two grams. So that is two into 10 to the power minus three times G 9.81 times tan 10 over, what is your Q, right? Q is the magnitude, it's five times 10 to the power minus eight. So if you solve this, you can get E as, right? Uh, let's see. Right, we'll solve that quickly. Two times 10 to the power five into 9.81 into 10, 10 degree divided by five. So it's uh, nearly 6.92 into 10 to the power four newtons per coulomb. It's a fairly simple question, right? So just easy things, right? Uh, the next part. So there's another part here. You'll see that also. Uh, part C. A proton is moving in a circular path perpendicular to a constant magnetic field takes one nanosecond to complete a one revolution. So the, you know the periodic time, right? So the periodic time is given. Right. Determine the magnitude of the ma uh, magnetic field, neglect any gravitational effects. So they have given the mass and they have given the charge. So it's a positive charge proton, right? Let's see. So I'll clear the screen. Right, so here uh, they have said, uh, a constant magnetic field, right? So let's take uh, the magnetic field to be in left to right direction, right? This is the magnetic field B. And the particle is uh, in a moving in circle. So if it, it, if it is moving in circle, obviously it should uh, enter the field in perpendicular to the field. So the velocity is V, right? So it is moving in a circle. Right, and the periodic time is given to us as one nanosecond, so one into 10 to the power minus nine seconds. And the mass is given, mass is given as 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. And uh, the charge Q is given as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. So ab ab absolutely there will be a centrifugal force, right? That centrifugal force, so towards center, at F would be equal to MR omega squared, right? And you can write this as BQV also, right? So MR omega squared is equal to BQ into V can be written as R omega. So R and R cancel us out. That's why they didn't talk about the radius, right? So M omega is equal to BQ, right? So B is equal to M omega by Q, right? So we know time, right? Periodic time is two pi by omega, right? So this is two pi by omega, that is this T. So omega can be written as uh, two pi by T, right? So M into two pi by QT, right? So now we have to just substitute the value. So 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 into two pi over Q, 
1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into t that is uh, 1 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 right so just we have to solve this so b is around 20 times it's around 62.83 teslas 62.83 teslas right it's a fairly simple question just you need to remember this bqv so actually this is bqv the force is bqv sine theta since it is entering perpendicular direction we are considering bqv part only since sine sin 90 is one so if it, it should if it is should uh, rotate in the perpendicularly in the circular direction definitely uh, it should enter perpendicularly if it does not enter perpendicularly, it will go in rotational and transitional, right? There will be two components. One is the transitional component and the other one, the perpendicular component. If it enters in an angle, right, for the field, let's say this is the field. If it is enters in angle, there will be a, this component. This is the transitional component, right? And there will be another component that is the rotational component, right? So this would move in this direction, something like this. It will rotate and it will move forward also. If it should completely rotate in one place, it should enter perpendicularly. If the particle has to move in a transitional manner, it should go in a parallel direction, right? So these are just basic fundamental ideas behind that, right? So, okay, the next question. So the next question is based again, again on uh, capacitors. Uh, let's see. Right, okay. Uh, capacitor has a vacuum in the space uh, between the conductors. If you double the amount of charge on each conductor, what happens to the capacitor? Nothing will happen, right? I'll explain that. Uh, we'll just read out the next part also. Uh, An uh, isolated capacitor of unknown capacitance has been charged to a potential difference of 100. Uh, when the charged capacitor is then connected in parallel to an uncharged 10 micro uh, farad capacitor, the voltage across the combination is 30 volt. Calculate the unknown capacitance, right? We'll see the both first and second part. So in the first part, uh, they are saying that there is a capacitance, capacitor, and they are doubling the charge, right? They are doubling the amount of charge in us and asking what is what happens to the capacitor. So if there is a capacitor with a dielectric between, if the, the area is A and the distance is D and the relative permittivity of this is K, so we know capacitance is K A epsilon naught by D, right? Epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum, right? Or air, right? So if you change the plate area, or if you change the distance, or if you change the dielectric, those are the three parameters which can change the capacitance, right? If you double the charge, so we know Q equals C. If you double the charge, the voltage will increase. The voltage between the plate will increase. Nothing will happen to the capacitance so it's fair and square right mm, the b part uh, so they are saying there is an isolated uh, capacitor unknown capacitance charged to 100 uh, volt so obviously the charge would be 100 c so from q equals ev now it is connected right this c is connected to a 10 microfarad right 10 microfarad capacitor and the common voltage becomes V. So that V is, they have given as 30, right? Uh, so if they didn't talk about any polarities, that means positive and positive are connected or positive and negative are connected, mostly it will be positive and positive. If they are connected with opposite signs, they will definitely say, uh, what is the sign? So what is the common wall? What is the uh, charge in the system here? So that is in this uh, unknown capacitance, there will be 30C and here in the below, there would be 300, right? So the total would be, what is the total charge here? Q, Q would be 30C 
plus 300 this would be definitely equal to this 100c because this was this one this is uncharged this 10 microfarad they have said that is uncharged so there is no charge the charge is given from this person only so it is distributed between both these two capacitors until the voltage is common so simply here 300 is equal to 70c so c is equal to 300 by 70 right micro Farads. Remember, I just used only this 10, so that is in micro. So you can simplify this and find the answer. Right? Uh, the C part. Right? If you see the C part, right? Uh, just I'll quickly share this. C part, this is the question which we did earlier. But here they have said it's connected in opposite sign. So already we saw that if it is connected in opposite sign, it will, the charge will distribute. So initially positive and negative will cancel out and it will, um, the remaining will uh, distribute between the capacitors until the voltage is common. So one thing remember when they are connected in series, right? So it is series, they have said, it is series, so here it is series. So both this nine volt, nine and four, both will get same charge, Q and Q, right? So when they are connected in uh, opposite sign together, this both Q and Q will cancel out. So there will be zero charge in the system, right? So the entire energy in the initial system, the initial system is when both are in series, entire energy in this initial system would be dissipated from heat or sparking sometime when they are connecting by sparking. So entire energy is lost. So the energy lost is what is in the initial system. So we have done this in the previous part. So you can see that there, right? Uh, so the next part, right? Uh, in the next part, uh, question number five, a student uses an ammeter, uh, comments that AC brands, uh, branch currents of 3 ampere and 5 ampere respectively combine together uh, to give a total current of 6.6 .6 ampere. Uh, she states that this is a violation of Kirchhoff's current law. What is your opinion? No, th this is not a cur uh, current, uh, Kirchhoff's current law violations when it comes to AC branch, right? So when, you, uh, when it comes to AC branch, you know where AC current has phase difference, right? If the two currents have some sort of phase difference, let's say one current is, uh, that particular student is saying, one current is three ampere, and another current is, uh, uh, so it's coming and join, it's getting jointed, right? So another uh, is, uh, let's say, this is four ampere, sorry, five ampere, and if there is some sort of phase difference, the resultant is, they have said the resultant is, right? 6.6. Uh, Right, so this is some simply you have to use cos law. Right, so from cos law you can write cos theta is equal to a squared plus b squared minus c squared by two ab. Right. So, what is a squared? That is three squared plus five squared minus six point six squared over three into five, uh, five, two into three into five. So if you get a value for theta, that is for cos theta within one and minus one. So that is obvious, right? Theta can attain such values. So this is 0 0.318. So theta is around 70 degrees, 71 degree and 25 uh, minutes. So obviously this is a possible value for phase different. So this can happen in AC current. This can happen in AC, but in the case of DC, no, right? DC, it can't happen. In direct current, it can't happen. Right, so the student's argument is correct when it comes to AC current. Okay. Uh, let's see the next part, the famous RLC. Right. So they have given us a RLC circuit. Let's see the question also. Right. RLC circuit. Uh, they have given the values of LC and R. Uh, uh, they have said the admittance of capacitor C and L, right? The admittance of capacitors C, uh, C and inductor L have the 
same magnitude and angular frequency WC provided by the sinusoidal source ET. Uh, the current IRMS through the resistor was measured as 12. So the current through the resistor is 12 and they are asking us to find uh, the value of uh, WC, right? So let's move. And further back, there are some more questions. Current through other components, taking the resistor's current as reference, the source form, phase diagram, power factor. Okay. So I'll just draw the circuit quickly. The circuit is R and C are parallel, right? So this is R, which is 200 ohms. This is C, which is uh, 2.5 microfarads and we have an inductor which is uh, 100 micro Henry and a source right so they have said the admittance of both the capacitor and the inductor are same right so if you write the, the reactance uh, for the magnitude of capacitor that is 1 over C omega right and for inductor XL, that is L into omega. So these both are same. That is why they are saying. So 1 over C omega is equal to L omega. So omega is equal to 1 over root of LC. So that is equal to 1 over within square root. You can find it as 1000, sorry, 100 into 10 to the power inverse 3 into 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 6. So if you solve this, you can find that is 2000 radians per second, right? Uh, next, they have said the current through the resistor, right? The RMS current, they have directly given the RMS current. So this is 12 milliampere in RMS, right? So you have to find the current through other components, right? So we need to know what is IC and we need to know what is I. L, right? So you can find VR, that is 12 times 10 to the power inverse 3 into 200, right? So that is simply 2.4 volt. So this is the same voltage for capacitor also. So capacitor also 2.4 voltage, right? That can be written as, 2.4 can be written as uh, minus J over C omega. C is 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 into omega. This is 2000 into the current IC, right? So you can find IC in terms of complex number, right? So IC is uh, 0.012J, right? So if you convert this to polar format, so 0.012 ampere, same 12 amperes, but in a phase difference of 90 degree, right? So then what is IL? IL is IC plus IR, Kratos law. So this is 0.012J IC, IR is 0.012, right? So if you convert to polar format, IC is, right? Um, sorry, IL dot IC, IC IL, it is 0 0.017, uh, amperes with a phase difference of 45 degree, right? You know IC, you know VC, so we are done, VC done, IC, okay, IL, okay, we need to know VL, right? So VL is IL times, that is 0 0.012J plus 0 0.012 into VL, that is uh, the impedance, that is L omega, that is J into L omega, right? So you have to substitute the value and find VL, so VL, that comes minus 2.4 plus 2.4 into J. So in polar format, so VL is equal to 3.39 volt and 135 degree of phase difference. So the source voltage, right? E is VL plus VC or VR, whatever it is. VL is, you know, minus 2.4 plus 2.4 J, right? Plus VCOVR that is 2.4 so this is 2.4 J so in polar format so 2.4 volt and 90 degree of phase difference right so if you write in sinusoidal format right 
the E. I'll write it out here, the E in sinusoidal format. So what is, this is the RMS value. If this is RMS value, the peak value is 2.4 into root two sine, you know, omega that is 2000 T plus the phase difference 90, right? This is the thing. So fairly simple. And they are asking us to find the uh, power factor, right? So you know how to find the power factor, right? You know the total uh, voltage, right? That is 2.4 into J. And you know the total current that is directly IL, you know IL, right? So the total power is, total power is V times I. So V is 2.4 into J into IL, right? IL you can substitute from here. So you can find the total power here. And if you convert that total power into polar format, you will get the uh, phase difference angle. And if you take cos phi, then that will be your uh, power factor, right? And so let me quickly calculate. So this is 2.4 i, sorry, 2.4 i times 0 0.012 plus 0 0.012i. So the answer is a fairly small value, right? That is in minus 0 0.0288 plus my 0 0.0288, okay? When you convert this into polar format, P is equal to 0 0.041 watts and a phase difference of 135, right? So you have to take the cos phi value. So power factor, that is cos phi, so cos 135, so cos 135, that is uh, 0 0.7, right? So when it comes to phase diagram, right? It's fairly simple, you need to take the axis, right? The imaginary axis and the real axis, right? You can simply directly mark uh, IR, so it is given, right? So draw to the scale. So if you draw to the scale, it's BC. So this is IR and VR, right? It would be a bit higher. VR and VC are same, right? If you see IC, IC is 0 0.012 in, uh, 90 degree phase difference and VL, sorry, IC, okay, IR, okay, what is IL? IL is 0 0.17 in this direction. This is IL with a 45 degree phase difference. And what is VL? That is 135 degree phase difference right here, which is leading. This is VL. So here, this is 90 degree. And VC is done. And the source voltage, right? source voltage is uh, 2.4 in 90 degree, right? 2.4 somewhere here, right? It's E, it is 2.4, right? So drawing a phase difference is much easier, right? Phase diagram, right? Not a uh, big task, right? For do with the complex number, so it will be much easier, right? Okay, uh, let's see the next part. Right. So the next part is also related to Kirchhoff, sorry, RLC circuit. So, so this is uh, the, the first part, A part is a theory, right? Where there will be a power factor would be one and uh, the re resonance, uh, at resonance, uh, there would be no any reactive power. and so on. Um, here there are two circuits. One is a series circuit and one is a parallel circuit. Uh, to investigate the series and parallel resonance, you are provided with an inductor. Okay, ideal ammeter and ideal voltmeter. Okay, there are some data. First you uh, investigate the series resonance by setting out the circuit in figure Q61 and tune the source E to the series uh, resonance angular frequency based on your knowledge of resonance, calculate and deduce the values of, and you have to draw the phases right. So I'll just uh, quickly draw through how to find the um, 
resonance frequency for both the circuits. If you know that, you can do the, do the next part. You know how to find V1, V2, V3 readings. So V1 is simply the uh, potential difference of uh, inductor. V2 is for capacitor. V3 is for uh, the resistor. Here, all three instruments will get the same current. Uh, in the parallel circuit, if you see, uh, all three uh, components will get individual current, different, different current values. But VP, that is the potential would be same. And AP is the total current, sum of all these three, that is in complex number. Meters will read only magnitude. So you have to find a polar value, convert it to polar format and give the magnitude only, right? Magnitude and the phase difference, okay? So we'll see how to calculate the resonance frequency, right? So here in the first case, it is series, right? Right. So this is um, inductor L, here capacitor C, and here resistor R. So it's very simple, right? So the total impedance is, said, is given by R plus J L omega minus J O C omega, right? So here is said equal to R plus J times L omega minus 1 over C omega. If there should be no any uh, reactive power, the imaginary part would be zero, right? So at resonance, at resonance, right? J part is zero. That is IM of imaginary part of E said is zero. So L omega minus 1 over C omega is equal to zero. From this omega can be written as 1 over root of L over C, right? Fairly simple. Hmm. So when it comes to parallel circuit, same calculation, right? R, uh, L, and C, right? R, L, C, right? So here, he said is equal to 1 over, right? 1 over R, is a total, right? Plus 1 over J, L, omega, plus 1 over minus J over C, omega, right? So here he said, T is equal to 1 over, right, 1 over R, right? Here, if the J goes up, uh, either you can do it in that manner. Uh, so here plus 1 over J L omega, here plus, sorry, minus C omega by J, right? Uh, here we are going to multiply both up and down by uh, R L uh, omega, into j right here also j so the above part will re remain minus right uh, r l omega times j over here the c omega into r l omega part goes front so r l uh, c omega squared right it goes to the first uh, here it is j times l omega right uh, minus right R and R cancels out, so J times L omega uh, minus uh, J L omega cancels out, J L omega cancels out, so that J L omega, so minus R is the remaining part, right? Okay, so here he said T is equal to, uh, so if you take the real part and imaginary part separately, so minus R L omega J over here, is R L C omega squared minus R minus J into L omega, right? So both up and down we will multiply by its conjugate, right? So here R L C omega squared minus R plus J into L omega. It's the same thing up R L C omega squared minus R plus J into L omega, right? So when you multiply both uh, top and bottom by its conjugate, the bottom part will become the real number. Obviously, it will become real, you know that, right? So in the top part, uh, there will be imaginary part remaining. So I'm going to take that imaginary part only. So J times the first term is a, re a real uh, imaginary part. J times the second term is also a, a imaginary part, right? Uh, only the last part becomes real, right? So here uh, R L omega times R minus R L C omega squared is equal to zero, right? So obviously omega is not equal to zero, 
R L is not equal to zero. So definitely this other term is equal to zero. That is, I'll take this R out. So R squared L omega into one minus L C omega squared is equal to zero. Right? So here these are not equal to zero. These are not equal to zero. So definitely this is zero. So one equal to L C omega squared. So omega is equal to one over root of L C. So whatever the case, E the series. or parallel right all three components are right only all three components not other than that only three components right r l c components r l c if they are either parallel or series the resonance frequency is this part one over root of l c right so you know how to find the resonance frequency right once you know the resonance frequency right uh the remaining part uh, you know the things right you know how to find the readings and you know how to draw the phase diagrams right mm. okay now uh just a additional question i would like to brush up on the seventh question a bit uh the seventh question is uh, sketch and explain the principles of operation of an ac generator right this is an ac generator this is a simple generator uh set up a generator or a dynamo right so you can see when it comes to a generator there would be definitely two magnets right so there would be two magnets right one is in the north pole right like this and another one in this side with the south pole right so between these uh, magnets this is south and north there would be a armature right armature is an moving coil like thing right 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 one wire would be long and one would be short in most of the cases right so there's a reason for that we'll see that right so uh, this is a generator right so we are giving the force and rotating the armature so here there would be some sort of fan or something right right so this is your armature right this coil like thing right this is your armature right so here at the end for an ac generator i'll draw it in different thing in, in an ac generator we'll be using a slip ring right that one ring for the shorter wire another ring for longer wire right not that these two are not touching huh? right these two are not touching x and y right so here due to this rotation so it is rotating this manner in anti clockwise direction this part right this part will uh, get a current flow right in this manner right and the other part would get a current flow in this upward right so initially the current is flowing from uh, x to y right if you see observe correctly after 90 degree rotation the current flow will be in the other direction right after 90 degree of rotation right the current flow will flow uh, differ from y to x right that is what happening in an ac generator right so these are slip rings this one is known as slip rings right so they are ask us to uh, convert this part simply to an uh, dc generator without making any large change so instead of this slip rings right instead of this slip ring we will use a split ring right a split ring part right so i'll just name this uh, armature as a b c and d uh, now this is in this orientation right after half turn right so this is in now dc b a rotation still the current would be flowing in the same right but if you see here right this longer one is connected to x right and the shorter one is connected to y right this is y right in this case the current was flowing from y to x from y to x Right, it started from Y, something like this. It started from 
y and it goes to x and it goes to the circuit and comes back to y. Here, if you say it starts from x and it goes to y, right? If you split the ring, right? If you split the ring into two part, there won't be any such change. Always current will move from x to y, but there will be an, um, uh, it won't be that, that smooth, right? So the sinusoidal variation, you know, the sinusoidal variation is like this. So this is for AC. So once you convert it into DC, the sinusoidal wave would be like this. Isn't it? So DC is in blue, AC is in red, right? But this is not smooth. To increase the smoothness, we increase the number of armatures. Right? When there are many, much more armatures, the curve would become uh, in this panel. I'll draw it in green. It would be like this. There will be so many armatures after increasing many and many. Finally, you will get a flat variation for DC. So that is specifically for DC. Right? Uh, so you know what is bridge rectifier and all. Bridge rectifier is a component which fully rectifies uh, the AC into DC, right? So this is a fully rectified graph, right? This DC graph is a fully rectified graph for a half waved uh, single wave rectification means there will be one part missing, right? This part would be missing. There won't be this part only again here. The, there won't be any rectification here. That is the single wave rectification. That would be zero at that time. So these are the things uh, which I thought um, after discussing in this session. Uh, subscribe my channel and you will get press the bell icon for further notifications. And hope to meet you all soon in another discussion. Thank you.